I'm actually going to ignore that and go to this option in the top right, which is always present throughout the UI and is easier to access. So we're going to go to Create Droplets. So here, the first thing that we do is we choose an image. We're going to go straight to Ubuntu, and then we choose our plan. We're just going to go with General Systems, Standard, and we're just going to build $5 virtual machines because the workloads that we're doing are very, very low power. We don't need backups at this time. We don't need to add additional block storage. And you should... Okay, so before we can use Ansible, within the Ubuntu installation, we need a few prerequisites. So what we need is Python and pip. So if we try and run Python, the system will tell us that we do not have Python. And if we try and run pip, it will tell us that we do not have pip. So Ubuntu is quite generous to, hit to us here and actually gives us the commands that we actually need to execute. So if we do apt install Python, and you can also just throw in Python pip at the end as well, Okay, it's going to go ahead. Go, it's going to go ahead and list all of the packages that it needs, and it is quite a few. It's actually two hundred and thirty-five megabytes of packages in order to install Python and Python pip. Now, if you come across a situation where you do not get this list and you get nothing, what you will need to run first is sudo apt update dash y. And that will go out and fetch all of the metadata around the available packages for your version of Ubuntu. You'll need to do that first. That may take a little while. Once that's done, we can then revisit our command here, sudo apt install python space python dash pip. We can press yes to this. And then that will begin downloading all the packages and it will eventually install python and python pip. Okay, so once our packages have finished installing, they've been downloaded and installed, we're now ready to actually install Ansible. So if we just clear the screen then, I've just used Control L to clear the screen. You can also type the word clear. If we now run Python, we can see that we get a Python prompt, 2.7.15. And if we type pip, we can see that we actually also have Python pip installed as well. Now to install Ansible. So it's quite simple, we just do pip install Ansible. That'll collect Ansible, download it, extract it. It'll also install all the dependencies that Ansible needs in order to operate. And once that's done, we'll have Ansible. Okay, so once you've finished with your pip install Ansible command, it may have taken a while, you'll clear the screen and we'll just be left with this prompt here. Now, if you try and type in Ansible, you'll see that it'll be command not found. So where is it actually located? So it's actually located in our home directory on the .local bin. And we can see we've got the latest version installed there. So how do we make it so that we can just type in Ansible at the command prompt? Okay, well that's quite simple to do. First of all, we fire up vi, we go to our home directory, update our bash rc file. We want to go down to the very bottom and we want to do export path equals path colon tilde slash dot local slash bin and what that will do that will add the home directory dot local slash bin directory to our path which is where the operating system looks for binaries now if we actually tell bash to read that file again so that's how you install ansible in the windows subsystem for linux it's a little bit more complicated than just running it on linux or macOS, but at least now we have something for our windows 10 users